Stick around till the end, you won't be disappointed. Here we go. 3D printing is supposed to be a technical pursuit, yet even in the realm of technical things, the degree to which our decisions and motivations are influenced by emotions is uncomfortable to admit. No human being is a logical robot, yet we are unending in our capacity to post-rationalize actions we undertook because of our feelings. You may be attracted to mechanical or digital endeavors and yet be more fixated on the unfairness of the world. The haves get more and more while the have-nots lose time and again. It's not right. There should be some sort of balance. Add to that the stultification caused by the unchanging positions we occupy within decrepit hierarchies, and it's no wonder we yearn for change. The fact that the majority of us feel this way is where populism comes from. We are downtrodden by the elites at the top of the hierarchies in violation of our ingrained sense of fairness. Things should be more evenly distributed. With the dawn of extrusion-based 3D printing in the 1990s until the patents started expiring in the 2010s, 3D printing was an elite activity. No home gamer could afford $35,000 for a Stratasys machine, but the DIY rep rap movement changed this. Then MakerBot first brought ready-made affordable kit machines to the masses, but MakerBot soon sold out to Stratasys, betraying us and joining the elites. The fear on the internet was that the elites had won once again and were going to deny us access to this tremendous new technology at an affordable price. Of course, Ultimaker was just hitting its stride at this time, but at five to ten thousand dollars for the price tag, uh, Ultimaker machines weren't really cheap enough to qualify as a printer for the common man. Then Prusa refined his printers to uh, an acceptable level and sold them for a thousand dollars or less. We suddenly had the perfect set of ingredients for a populism which could ride on the coattails of the movement surrounding uh, open source software. It's no wonder why so many would perceive of Joseph Prusa as the open source savior of 3D printing, even if the perception didn't line up with reality. I fell for it too. Without you guys, the industry would not be advancing as much as it is, so we right. thank you a whole bunch. Before Prusa's agents engaged in guerrilla marketing efforts to tie 3D printing with the socialist-style populism by blanketing comment sections across the internet, 3D printers were perceived as just another cool gadget. Even though humans get excited for new uh, machines that allow us to do things differently, nobody thinks buying an affordable table saw is going to change the world. When the first MakerBot was introduced, the DIY personality types were thrilled about what was now economically available to them. Here was an awesome new tool that was going to give us the capacity to create and repair things better than before, thus giving us the ability to meet the varied, unique, and niche needs which are not profitable enough for the larger system to address. We knew 3D printing had the promise of empowering individuals to be even more self-sufficient, but nobody had any misguided notions that 3D printing would somehow change the dominant social system. The vast majority of individuals involved in the 3D printed firearms community still feel this way. They love 3D printing because through it, they are able to arm themselves and feel powerful as individuals. They don't think these machines are going to change the fabric of society, but if you go looking, you can find guys who actually do believe this. There's going to be several links in the description, the first of which is going to be to an article called 3D printing leads the way towards a post-capitalist manufacturing. And that author clearly thinks that 3D printing is going to help upend capitalism. The sentiment is dripping with populism, couched in hatred for the current system and its elites. For the longest time, I thought that populism just meant a movement which is popular. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't understand the specifics of the term until I came upon a video which blew my mind, defining it and contextualizing it. Especially when I got to the part of that video where the narrator says that populists can't criticize their own movement. So getting populists to morally criticize their chosen us is sort of like trying to push two like positively charged magnets together. They just don't want to do it. The term true believer comes to mind. As the famous French thinker Gustave Le Bon said, the masses have never thirsted after truth. Whoever can supply them with illusions is easily their master. Whoever attempts to destroy their illusions is always their victim. Anyone following this channel for years will understand why this is such an important thing for me to have learned. It explains why I have haters, even though I am just trying to make things better for everyone. I'm trying to speak truth to power, to solve problems by punching up 
at the established players while championing the worthy underdogs. Yet my words threaten the worldview of 3D printing populists, and so they have engaged in all-out warfare on my person to discredit me. It's personal, and it's wicked, but the world isn't fair. I get that. I can take the hits so long as I'm not assassinated in the shadows. I just want what is going on to be out in the open. No cheating, no underhanded manipulation, no lies. My words are not those of a weak man whining and complaining. I'm shining a light on shameful things that are being said and done to me by cowards who hide in the darkness of anonymity. But who created and guides this populism that punishes me for criticizing it? Populism doesn't just happen. There must be someone who realized that he stood to gain if he could get a movement started. Do you guys remember the ascendancy of Maker Fairs and Make Magazine? Like 15 years ago, the word maker wasn't really even a thing. If you said, I'm a maker, it was grammatically correct, but native English speakers would suspect that English was not your first language. The non-specificity of it was just kind of awkward. So saying, I'm a violin maker sounds good, but I'm a maker sounds vague and kind of meaningless. In hindsight, yeah, it seems pretty obvious that the grammatical change was a strategic move to establish a brand around an entire personality type. There have always been industrious people calling us makers while glorifying the activities and dialing up the excitement factor by throwing entire fairs to celebrate our abilities attracted us like moths to a candle. Doing all that while controlling the publishing real estate surrounding the word was pure marketing genius. I only know of one other such success. The word jogging was created and brought to the masses by a guy named Bill Bowerman, who basically invented the sport with his book in 1971. He followed up the success of that book by co-founding a company to sell products specific to his new sport. The company was named Nike. Have you ever heard of it? <laughs> How rich is Nike? How rich is Make Magazine? These were once grassroots movements until they established dominance and became unchanging hierarchies that almost exclusively benefit the select few who built the pyramid underneath themselves. The wizard said, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain because he didn't want his manipulations to be revealed. Even though Joseph Prusa appears to have built a pyramid underneath himself, he is not a man concealed by drapes. He desperately wants us to pay attention to him. He broadcasts so much of himself that anyone who actually considers him can clearly see his true colors. He is a petty egotist who puts his name on things he did not create in an attempt to fill the void of his insecurities with false accomplishments. He is so transparently flawed that no movement was going to organically happen in his name. The driving force behind Prusa's successful marketing efforts, whose manipulations are concealed behind curtains, is the one we need to reveal. Who is the wizard behind the populism in 3D printing? Introducing Make Magazine author Matt Stoltz, who now works at Prusa. Hello, and welcome to Prusa Live uh, 39. Uh, I'm here with uh, Nicholas Sousa, and Joe is back with us, which is hey. great. It's possible that he has always been the lead marketer for Prusa, but his bio doesn't tell us that. It does say he is a community organizer, which is a job invented by a man named Saul Alinsky to grow political movements from the ground up. Mr. Alinsky was a man with deep ties to the left wing of American politics. Now that we know that Mr. Stoltz organizes communities, is it any wonder why the Prusa camp likes to refer to everyone who posts content on the internet or otherwise engages with 3D printing as belonging to the community? The assumption of encompassing so many individuals under their umbrella term is an insultingly bold move to establish dominion over us. As if all industrious personality types, makers, who buy 3D printers are somehow united, unwavering under Matt Stoltz's control and not thinking for ourselves. And where exactly is the line between Make Magazine and Prusa Research? Does Mr. Stoltz have significant control over both? What about all those awards that Make Magazine has given to Prusa over the years? Were those just awards that they gave to themselves? Maybe you are one of the many who has been caught up in the hype and finds a sense of belonging in the community. If you are impassioned enough to leave comments in internet forums, it is likely that you are further driven by the deeper ideology surrounding open source. 
Prusa Research seems to be a company built on that foundation. And it is true that Prusa has benefited greatly from open source, but has Prusa reciprocated? Obeying the letter of the license agreement is not the same as benefiting and growing open source as a movement. We rarely see other companies adopting innovations first seen on Prusa printers or in Prusa software. This can mean one of two things. One, capable engineers working for other companies have assessed Prusa's products and realized they aren't worth copying, meaning Prusa's reputation is manipulated and overhyped. Or two, despite being labeled open source, other 3D printer companies know that they will be penalized in the court of public opinion if they dare to touch any innovation Prusa can claim as his own. Being penalized for using open source is contrary to the spirit of open source. Does Prusa condone internet attacks accusing competitors of copying their open source? Somebody should ask Prusa this question. So let's remember that Prusa became beloved for bringing affordable 3D printing to the masses, but today there are even more affordable options. Many Chinese machines cost less than a Prusa, yet make the same quality of prints. The Ender 3 is the one that everybody talks about, but any new printer coming from China since like 2020 that costs less than $750 and more than $200 is going to work just fine. If you don't want to take a risk, just look for one with reviews on YouTube. You will get what you see in the videos. No matter how hard the Prusa fanboys try to convince you otherwise, these machines aren't that hard to use and work just fine. As such, they do a much better job filling the role of the 3D printer for the masses than a Prusa does. The fact that there appear to be so many brands indicates a more diverse and democratic marketplace. If Prusa was the only option, that would be a monopoly, and nobody wants that except Prusa. So if you are an open source warrior, chances are that you champion open source as just one of your leftist values. Whether or not Prusa actually benefits the open source movement, the company says they do, so you've decided to support them and stay true to your leftist teammates. Somehow, a corporation that manufactures a machine in another country has got you to believe that they are a left-wing organization representing your interests like a union or the Democratic Party. But does Prusa really uphold your left-wing values? They brag about how successful they are, Joseph makes videos showing himself as the only employee of the company, and there doesn't appear to be a we or an us in all of this narrative coming from Prusa. Even in their own country, they cut out everyone else. Every single Prusa used to come with a roll of filamentum PLA. Now we have Prusament, and I haven't heard anyone say the name filamentum for years. Does Prusa really support the greater good and the rights of the downtrodden? Or is Prusa Research just another unwelcoming hierarchy with no room for you and me? All of these words about community and open source seem kind of hollow, don't they? This is the kind of lip service we usually get from politicians maintaining their privileged positions, unjustifiable privileged positions of power. On the other side of the aisle, if you are a conservative type, who champions firearm ownership and uses Prusa printers, you should acknowledge that Prusa and Matt Stoltz appear to be ideologically on the left and opposed to you. You should ask them if they support the use of their printers for the task of making firearms or if they would like to prevent you from doing so. They won't talk to me. Their strategy is to pretend like I don't exist officially. Instead, they exert great effort and expense in a hidden way using anonymous avatars to spam my comments and other internet forums with their narrative. This allows them to overwhelm and talk over my message while simultaneously making me look like the crazy one, obsessed with Prusa, but not worthy of their time. It's a dishonest tactic, but it's effective. <laughs> if you ask instead of me, maybe they would come out in support of 3D printed firearms. If they don't do this, you need to realize that showcasing their printers on social media is giving your ideological enemy free advertising. Like I said at the beginning of the video, we are emotional creatures, and all of my reasoned words here are probably just gonna make you say something like, wow, this guy really hates Prusa. And I've probably failed to engage your emotions. That's okay with me. The whole point is that this shouldn't be an emotional issue. This is DIY engineering, not politics. Having an engineering focus means that it took years for me to figure out the situation as I've described it here. You probably have a technical focus as well, and so all of this may feel strange to hear. 
In the future, when you encounter statements which are positive towards Prusa, apply the model I have presented here today. If the model does a good job of explaining what you are observing, I can be vindicated. On the other hand, if you encounter contradictory evidence, please present it so that I can adjust my cognition. At any rate, the simple truth is that Prusa just makes machines. Prusa is not, not a social movement. See through the manipulations and realize that there are less expensive machines which do the same job and produce the same quality but take less from your wallet. Don't be a sucker. Don't fall for the appeals to your emotions or sense of political belonging. Prusa just wants your money like every other company. All right, a quick note about my detractors. My arguments are strong and my opponents know that my narrative is valuable, but they refuse to concede even a single inch despite their wrongness. Remember, populists can't self-criticize. They see the world as inherently political. They think that if they can discredit me, then my message will disappear as well. But is it really my message or am I just speaking the truth? I certainly don't have any unique claim over the truth. Shooting me, the messenger, is a sort of lie, an attempt to bury the truth. Despite the apparent diversity of the negative comments, the majority of them follow a simple pattern. Expose a small and trivial weakness in the thousands of words that I said. Infer that this weakness is representative of my person or character, then dismiss the entire video as the drama-filled rant of a flawed man who can't be believed. Using this technique, I could be 99% right in identifying the truth, and yet they would silence me still. Have you ever achieved 99% on a test and earned a failing grade? Because the pushback is always directed at my person, you will likely be wondering why I would make a video such as this. There must be some truth to the assessment that I am obsessed with Prusa. If so, I'm not the only one. I disproportionately receive Prusa-centric comments, and the more of those comments I get, especially the ones that attack me personally, the more I am motivated to keep making content to show the fanboys why they are wrong. There is a quote that has kind of changed and, you know, um, evolved over the years, but the gist of it is, news is what somebody does not want you to print. All the rest is advertising. Why are you wasting your time leaving hateful comments on my videos in support of Prusa? I'm just trying to give the news and you are advertising for Prusa. Are you getting paid or are you just a sucker that works for free? If you disagree with me and you think I'm crazy, the best thing you can do is ghost me. Don't leave a comment. There will be nothing for me to react to. You can go on your way and I can start making other, more valuable content because there are so many more interesting things to talk about than one stupid, manipulative 3D printer company. Thank you for watching this video, but most of all, thanks to my Patreon supporters. I love you guys. You're still supporting me after all these years and that truly warms my heart and keeps me here in front of the camera. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.